This is Twit. What do you want to talk about today, Mr. Scott? Well, I got a I got an email from a listener, actually an installer, Bob Olson in Minnesota, who's doing a home theater install coming up, and he wanted to know about two two different projectors, which which one he should get. He's in the the projectors are in the five thousand dollar range, which sounds like a lot, and it is. It's certainly not chump change, but he's looking at four K projectors, HDR capable projectors, and have that under ten thousand dollars, well under ten thousand dollars is really quite remarkable, in my opinion. So he's looking at the Sony and the JVC. And these are two of the very best projectors makers, certainly, in the consumer market, no question. And he wonders, you know, which one to get. Well, the Sonys have native 4K resolution, which means they have each individual pixel is, is there and separately represented on the imaging chips. The JVCs until the very latest models use what's called e shift so they have a, a less they have fewer pixels on the actual imaging chip but they're so fast they wiggle back and forth between do, two different positions and simulate 4k by in, in what's called a temporal uh, switching uh, back and forth between two different positions and you might think well geez you wouldn't you really want native 4k and not have to do this pixel wiggling thing? And the answer is yes, theoretically you do, but it's amazing how well that pixel wiggling works. It's really <laughs> astonishing. It doesn't sound like it would work well at all. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> well, you remember DLP projectors. How, how could wiggling tiny micro mirrors work? I know. You know? But they yeah. do. That's what's in most cons commercial cinemas now is DLP projectors. Yeah. Um, so anyway, this this E shift, which JVC calls it, Epson calls it 4K enhancement. The imagers inside the projector are actually 1080p, but then they they take these these pixels and they wiggle them all back and forth, and the two that are the two positions have different values of of color and brightness and so on. So they can actually create something very close to a 4K image. It's not quite as good, but it's surprisingly good. It's a, quite amazing, actually. Yeah. Now, here, here's the deciding factor for me is the black level. I'm a sucker for black you level. You are a I black level it. snob. I am. I love a deep black level. It's really important to me. It makes the rest of the image really pop. Yeah. And and it's it's <laughs> sort of the anti-canvas on which the, the picture is painted, if you will. And the JVC has it all over the Sony for that. So I've, I've got to say, I would go for the E-shifted, pixel-wiggled um, JVC over the Sony for that reason. You and because the pixel wiggling works amazingly well. You can see why JVC doesn't actually, you know, label it the pixel no. wiggle. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> they probably have a better funny. name for it than, you know. Yeah, get called, our... they call it E-shift. E-shift. E yeah. So, that, okay. that even that kind of implies wiggling pixels. I don't know. <laughs> e shift. Huh? All right. Now it's interesting. In the old days, when HD first came out, we had uh, some rear projection TVs. You remember those? Yeah, yeah. That actually did pixel wiggling too, and they called it wobulation. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All yeah. Right. All yeah. right. Anyway, so I recommend the JVC, and it's uh, the one I recommend is the DLA X nine uh, seven ninety. Sorry, DLA dash X seven ninety R, which has a great native contrast ratio, deep deep blacks, um, and it when it first came out, it listed for six grand. Now it's on their website for four grand, so you're even saving some money. Over the over the Sony, which the lowest cost Sony is the VPL VW two ninety five uh, ES, and that's going to be five grand, and it's got native four K resolution, but it doesn't have those deep deep blacks that I really like. So, you know, and then he says quickly, uh, you know, he says, well, hey, if I can save some money, maybe I could put that extra money into a seven point two point four sound system, an Atmos sound system with rear surrounds, as opposed to five point. 2.4. It's using two subwoofers. And uh, I say, sure, you know, if the client wants that, that's that's a good place to put the money, no question. Um, I My room, I don't have really enough room for a good rear surround set of speakers, so I'm perfectly happy with 5.1.4. That mean, What that means is five speakers around you, 
uh, one or two subwoofers, point one or point two, and then four Atmos speakers overhead. And I definitely prefer four Atmos speakers overhead as opposed to two. So that's he's he's going in exactly the right direction. Do you ever leave that room, or you just kind of live there? <laughs> Full yeah, time. I leave it sometimes. Yeah, once in I, have a while. To, I have to come in my office and do some work. That's once not in your a while. office. Make it your no. office, man. Then you have then you have every excuse to stay there. Yeah, but then I couldn't concentrate on my work. <laughs> I'm watching TV. <laughs> leave me alone. That's right. As my wife says, I watch TV for a living, but I still have to write about it. Yeah, darn it. If we could darn just it. take that part out, everything would be fine. <laughs> you can talk about it on the radio every week. Scott Wilkinson, he's our home theater geek. Thank you, Scott. Bet. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. See, I put all the TV stuff in the room so I never have to leave.